Hello and welcome to another Portworks demo. My name is Pavan Shah and in this demonstration, we'll talk about how you can use Portworks DR to build disaster recovery solutions for your tier one applications. So when you're talking about disaster recovery solutions, you can build a synchronous DR solution between two Kubernetes clusters running in the same region and also add an asynchronous cluster to that DR relationship so you can have a third leg or uh, if you are familiar with disaster recovery solutions, a 3DC architecture where you have two uh, clusters in complete sync. So you have zero RPO and then a third cluster sitting in a completely different region, also replicating data at a regular RPO or time interval, giving you that asynchronous relationship if an entire region goes down. So that's the use case that we are going to uh, display or demo in this uh, particular video. For this, we have a couple of clusters running in one specific AWS region. So these are vanilla open source Kubernetes clusters with one master, three worker nodes each running Kubernetes version 1.21. As you can see, our first cluster has master one and node one, 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 two and one, three. And our second cluster has master two and node two, one, two, two and two, three. Both of these clusters have already been configured with Portworks Enterprise in a stretched cluster topology. So there is just one single Portworks storage cluster stretched across these two different Kubernetes cluster. So if we exec into one of these Portworks pods and do a pixie cuttle status command, pixie cuttle is just another CLI utility from Portworks. You can clearly see that it's a the Portworks uh, cluster is fully operational and it has six different worker nodes, three from each cluster. So you have three nodes, node 1, 1, 1, 2, and 1, 3 from your primary cluster and nodes 2, 1, 2, 2, and 2, 3 from your secondary cluster. Both of these clusters are different Kubernetes cluster, but as you can see, a, a, a single portwork stretched storage cluster. Using a stretched topology, you can achieve that zero RPO or zero data loss for your disaster recovery solution. Since these are this, this is the same cluster, you can actually check the status of your cluster domains. So cluster one and cluster two are individual cluster domains and both of them are in sync. We also have a third leg. So this is our asynchronous cluster. Uh, and instead of using the open source Kubernetes that we did for our primary and secondary, this third or tertiary cluster, which is running in US PES2 is an Amazon EKS cluster. This is just to show the how you can combine different Kubernetes distributions in your DR stack. Uh, this standalone uh, Kubernetes cluster or standalone EKS cluster also has Portworks Enterprise already installed. So let's exec into the Portworks pod and this tertiary cluster and then do a pixie cuttle status command as well. Uh, as you can see, Portworks, the status is operational and this is again a three node storage cluster with all three nodes contributing storage to the overall storage cluster and are online. So this is what our cluster status looks like. For the DR demo, we are going to use a simple application and we are going to use the demo namespace to run that application. Uh, since we haven't established our DR or configured our DR solution yet, there's nothing running in the tertiary cluster. Now let's go ahead and do a couple of things. Let's go ahead and create that cluster pair relationship between our primary and secondary and our primary and tertiary clusters. So in this case, uh, the sync DR relationship or that zero RPO relationship is established by deploying the cluster pair in the sync DR.yaml file. And uh, this will establish uh, a trust relationship between our primary and secondary cluster. And then we also apply a second cluster pair YAML file, which will establish an async DR relationship between our primary and our tertiary clusters. So as you can see our sync DR, since the storage replication is handled, handled at the storage layer, storage status is not provided, but scheduler status is ready. So they are in sync. And then async DR, both the scheduler and storage status is set to ready because the replication happens at that regular interval, not just for storage, but also for all the different Kubernetes objects in the demo namespace. For this replication, we are going to use a schedule policy object. So a schedule policy basically allows an administrator to configure a, a time interval which matches their SLA or which matches their RPO requirements. So in our case, we are going to use a schedule policy called demo policy, which basically uses an interval of every 15 minutes to copy data from our primary to our tertiary site or tertiary cluster. Now that our cluster pair objects are up and running, let's actually deploy the demo application. This is a simple demo app where we have a MongoDB based stateful application. Uh, so it has a backend Mongo pod, which uses a persistent volume claim on our primary cluster. And then once that's more that Mongo instance is up and running with that PVC on the backend. Uh, again, as you can see, it's a read write once uh, persistent volume claim uh, using storage class PX db. 
once the backend component is up and running we'll deploy the front end component this deploy is a simple front end uh, uh, ui for our application as you can see we have three different parts for the front end ui uh, and a load balancer based endpoint or a node port based endpoint that we can use to access our application so now our application is fully functional on the primary side so let's go ahead and generate some data that can we can use to show the failover between different clusters so we'll register a new user i'll just use my name bhavan shah i'll use my email address again please don't use this to spam me but yeah visha at purestorage.com that's my email address once i have fully registered uh, i'll place a couple of orders so i'm a vegetarian so i'll order the grilled cauliflower steaks uh, if you haven't had that it is a good uh, uh, entree if you are stuck in a steakhouse <laughs> So we have a, a one order, we'll also place a second order, um, we'll order smoked chicken this time with some different sites and we'll generate some additional data that's stored in that MongoDB database. So we have a couple of orders in our order history and this is the data that we want to protect. So now, uh, now that our application has been deployed, let's go ahead and create the migration schedule objects. So the migration schedule objects, we'll need a two of these, uh, one for the synchronous replication between our primary and secondary cluster and one for our asynchronous replication between our primary and tertiary clusters. So uh, we have applied both of these migration schedule YAML files using configurations that I've generated. And once that's done, you can use kubectl get migration schedules in the demo namespace since this is a namespaced object you can use kubectl get migration schedule get migrations you can also do a describe migrations or you can use our stork ctl utility to get more details around the, these migrations so as you can see for sync dr since the replication is handled at the storage level it didn't take any time our volumes were replicated and all of the kubernetes resources six of those were successfully migrated or copied from our primary to the secondary cluster for our primary to tertiary cluster for the asynchronous relationship uh, right now we are copying all the data that's being stored in our persistent volumes and once the persistent volume is successfully copied from primary to tertiary that's when we'll move all the different six kubernetes resources so as you can see our volumes are done at this point and then we move on to the application components a zero out of six and it just takes a few seconds for the application components to be completely migrated as well these, this is not a one-time migration. This is just an iteration in our DR plan. Now that we have our migrations, at least the first iteration successfully completed, uh, let's go ahead and simulate a couple of disaster events. The first one, what we'll do is we'll simulate a disaster event for just our primary cluster, not the entire region. So we still have access to our all of our data. We still have access to all of our, uh, we still have access to the secondary cluster that we have running in the same region. Uh, since this is a simulation, uh, we'll use a couple of commands to do this. But again, if there was an actual disaster event where you lost access to your cluster, you don't need to perform any of these steps. So to just perform this simulation, we'll deactivate that cluster domain. So our site A is, we are taking it down and we are scaling down the number of replicas that we have for our application components. So first we scale down our Mongo uh, deployment and then we are scaling down our web component as well. Once everything has been scaled down and our pods are actually uh, down to zero, our component uh, we we can ver verify that our application is down on the source side so if we try to refresh the page you won't be able to access that application this simulates a disaster event so as soon as a disaster strikes you can uh, perform a re restore or a recovery operation on the secondary side so let's ssh or access our secondary cluster and then uh, it's one simple command to restore or recover an application on the secondary side stock ctl activate migrations and the name namespace where the application is supposed to be running uh, as soon as you execute this command uh, portworks already knew how many pods you had running for all of those components so we'll start spinning those up uh, we already had before even you uh, executed that recovery operation your service objects your persistent volumes everything existed the only thing that's being deployed right now when you initiated that dr operation was that the pods were getting spun up so the rto or recovery time objective basically boils down to the amount of time uh, kubernetes takes to spin up or deploy those pods that are needed by your application. So once our backend component is completely online, our front end components can talk to the backend database, which is MongoDB in this case. And then you can just take the service endpoint and access your application. So since we are again using node port, uh, again, you can use a load balancer based endpoint if you want, but we're just using node port. So we'll access it using a node IP of a secondary EKS cluster. 
uh, with a specific port number. Uh, I can log in using the same credentials that I created uh, initially. So bsharpyourstorage.com and my super uh, secure password that I used for my account creation. And if you go to that order history page, you can see that both of my orders, the cauliflower steak and the smoked chicken are right there in the order history. So there was no data loss. Uh, and again, since we we are doing the application at the storage level, I know I just had two orders, but if this was a real world e-commerce application, you would not lose any records or any uh, data uh, from for your application. Now, as part of the next step to demonstrate the 3 DC or 3 data center technology or, or deployment architecture, let's simulate a region failure. For this, what we do is uh, we'll do a, a strong CTL get migrations and we'll see that our synchronous or uh, sorry, our asynchronous relationship is still active. Uh, again, since this is just a simulation, we'll go ahead and suspend the migration schedule for our async migration schedule for the demo namespace. This basically stops any more replication from happening. So this like if we bring down the number of pods in our primary cluster, this won't this change won't get copied over to our tertiary side. Now let's go ahead and recover our application in US West 2. So again, it's the same command stop CTL activate migrations in the demo namespace. As soon as you hit enter, Again, we already had the metadata of the number of pods you needed for Mongo and your front-end component. Once that's done, uh, you can actually use your regular kubectl commands to monitor the deployment of those pods. Once those pods are up and running, you can uh, again ac uh, access your application. Since this is an asynchronous DR relationship, the RPO commitment was just 15 minutes. So if you had data that was written in the last 15 minutes, you might lose that because of this uh, async DR relationship. So again, sync DR, no data loss, async DR can be that 15 minute RPO. So let's now that our application is available on in US West 2, let's go ahead and log in and we can verify our order history again. So uh, we were still able to recover our, our application really quickly in this cross-region architecture. That's it for this demo. Thank you for watching.